Hello and welcome to a review of the Lego uh, Blacktron 2 set from 1991 called Spe Spectral Star Guider. Um, it is a really cool set. It's a really cool set. This is one of my favorite, I think, Lego sets of all time. I just absolutely adore it. Um, I recently finally finished getting basically every part for this thing to rebuild it up. So let's let's take a look at it. First, we've got this Blacktron minifigure. They're all the same, you know, very simple. I've got that nice B. I don't really want to comment on them much. I've already, I've, I've already made a video talking about other Blacktron sets where I mentioned these guys. Uh, you're supposed to have two, but I only have one, as this is quite the large vehicle. And you can just plop him in there. And he's cool. But uh, for this set in particular, I decided to take some members of Blacktron 1 because the set was kind of lonely. There's only, I only have one figure, so, you know, they're technically the same faction. I mean, even if they weren't, who cares? But I decided to, I'm just, I'm just gonna put them together. Gonna have them all hang out in this one set. So it's like a little family, the family reunion. But let's take a look at this thing. Now this is a ground vehicle, something that Lego Space, you know, it got, but on this scale, it was a little more uncommon. I'd say the first, uh, the first one I think of is the core mag 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 magnetizer, the, the big Mtron vehicle. And this is reminiscent of that, but on a smaller scale. But I feel with that, it, ha it, it still has the same oomph. These, these wheels are just massive. Like, if you think about it, like, half of this thing is just wheels, but the wheels are so great that it's like, whatever, that's fine. And, I don't know, the platform aspect of it, there's so much standing room, it just takes up a lot of mass. It really gets around the low piece count, because, of course, a lot of LEGO, LEGO space sets at this time had really low piece counts in general. Now, if we're going to look into the details of, like, the actual non-wheel part of it, we've got a cockpit that's very similar to the Allied Avenger. It opens like this to make this cool shape, and our boy fits in here. I love the way it separates out all these different, these different little, you know, different little uh, ways to open it, it just makes it feel unique and it almost feels like there's a transformation feature with this and up here one thing that i found weird about blacktron 2 is that beside there's very few pieces that are printed and say blacktron but you've got this which i don't hh like i don't i don't know what this is supposed to be it's very interesting maybe it's supposed to maybe i'm looking at it wrong but it always looked like h's to me it's actually it's probably not supposed to be but it's nice and shiny it's a decent print i just don't know what it's supposed to represent and you have more of those spectral bubble kind of things which i love i love these pieces so much and they open up on all sides and just there's so many different flaps and things that open up it's just so extravagant i really love it but problem is that in this state it's kind of hard to get into it so they actually came up with solution and that is this entire thing is modular yeah the entire set is modular so you can take this part up just have this you can have this and you can even have this so it's like oh i just love the way it comes apart and every piece you can mix them and match them take other sets like uh, the allied avenger and you can really just you know if with a few subtle modifications you can do even more stuff but as it stands it's set up to do simple things like combining this with this or yeah or this with this and it's just cool because you get that blacktron art style in such an organic lego way but you have so many different but you have so many different ways to express that within the sets that you already have and it's just i don't know it encourages people to get more of the same sets which I'm sure it'd be good for business, but on like a on like a fan level, it's like it's still exciting to see Blacktron sets. It's like, oh, what can I do with this? What new can I do with it? There's always something new to do, and I, I just really like love that uh, Life on Mars. One of my favorite themes use that very well. And this is the same. My one critique is that I wish the connection was a little more, uh, I guess, compatible. You know what I mean? Like I wish that there was um, a way to add more stuff to this. To make it more of an abomination because that's the kind of thing i get the most out of i mean i guess in theory you could combine this to the back of the rocket yeah but then the rocket falls off and it's like oh this basically has to be the back which you know sometimes these modules have that issue but uh, it's it's very much built in the design here you can tell they you know they wanted there to be compatibility but it's not too crazy but i do love crazy uh looking at this part now uh 
unconfiguring it. I like, I don't know, <laughs> I, I just, I don't know, something about just viewing this separate, it's just such a different feel, you know? Like, it just feels like a completely different set, which I just think is awesome. Looking at this, uh, you can open the bubble and have a better view of it. Uh, open this part up, having him stand in there isn't the best. Uh, there's a little, um, little locker for stuff and some nice spacey prints that kind of have uh, kind of older Blacktron colors, if you think about it, black and yellow. Uh, the weird thing about this part is that I feel like there's just very weird, the standing room is very weird, it's kind of cramped, uh, but you can just about get someone in there, but you gotta kind of finagle them in, and then, yeah, the air tanks in the way, so I think they just want you to just toss them in there like that, and it's a little uneven, it's kind of hard to get the perfect match, and there is probably gonna be gaps no matter what you do, which is a little bit annoying, but, you know, they were working with limited pieces, and of those limited pieces, you have... Let me take this off. Wow, that, that that's on there really tight. Holy crap. Actually, no, that's that's part of the piece. This is a very, very odd, uh, specifically molded piece. Sorry about the light in the shot, but it, it has like a little uh, connection for this. It's like a little pod. And I mean, it works. The amount of studs I think is perfect for keeping this thing intact while also having it be uh, easily removable, but it's just such a weird piece for them to produce. That's the thing about Lego space in these days is that like, they just have like random things, random pieces that are super weird and specific, but kind of fit, but also like, why were they, why were these produced, you know? Like why, why in such a conservative age of the Lego system would they introduce a piece like this? It's like, I don't know. Sorry about that. the light was in the shop for a bit too long. Yeah, uh, there's not much to say. Uh, there's a standing room here with uh, a little turntable so you can simulate moving it around because it does have a hinge here and it I just love that. I just like the rough and tumble, the rough and tumble feel of it. I can put this thing back on. I think it just, I don't know. I, I know it, it's kind of close to the turbo tank from Star Wars. That's the first thing I think of when I see these wheels. Maybe it's just the Lego connection, but I just, I don't know. I love the unique feel of this thing. And I love Blacktron too. It's it's really it's really I've really uh, grown to appreciate the theme more over time, and this is just another great set from it. Let's take a look at the instructions. I, I'm on I'm so honestly I'm I'm not trying to be mean, but after looking at like a modern Lego set, a modern Harry Potter set, the simplicity of this is just so oh my god it's so refreshing. You know, like the manual is just easy to hold with with, with one hand even. Uh, very simple. Of course, that's because these steps are, they ask you a lot more of you. Actually, let me comment on this. This picture is beautiful. I love the freaky, the grid uh, 80s style background, that stupid 80s grid that's in every bit of 80s nostalgia, you know, but like, I don't even know how much it appeared. This is 1991, so I don't know what that says. With the translucent neon green pieces glowing super, super, uh, super bright. But, uh, yeah, we've got some build. We've got some build stuff. They kind of show you how to do the modules one by one, which I think is cool. Here's the <laughs> that piece uh, in a manual, which is kind of interesting seeing it within real Lego print. And then this is the base of the uh, of the tumbler tumb tumbler section. Tumbler. Yeah, beautiful build. <laughs> I don't know. There's not much to say about the instructions. They're old Lego instructions, you know. There's not much uh, that they each have unique from each other. Uh, yeah, I guess that's my review. I love this set. I think it's amazing. I think, I, I, on, right now, I think I'm just excited from building this up and having it be, like, all together and being such a new feeling set. But I honestly would say this is one of my favorite sets that I have right now. Like, I just adore every part of it. I adore the green translucent neon green i adore the bubble the bubbles i don't know i adore the modularity uh, i adore the amount that you can just flare this thing up like can open it up it just it looks like it'd be really fun to stop motion animate you know i guess that's part of the part of that thing and why that's so appealing to me but yeah i love this set it's amazing 10 out of 10 uh yeah <laughs>